Okay, so now I'm going to introduce to you guys um, a new topic and it's pretty important. Um, it's called projections. So this is an, um, an example of an application of how you're going to use the dot product. Because um, before that, you, I know when I was learning dot product, I was like, okay, so we multiply two vectors and then that's cool. I know the formula and how to, but why are we doing this? But anyways, so this is um, an important application of dot product. Um, amongst other things as well, of course. And there's quite a bit of geometry um, involved in the project in projections. So here's the basic concept uh, behind it. So let's say you have a vector, okay, and we'll we'll just name this vector u. It's not a unit vector, just a normal vector, okay. And let's say you have another vector over here, just named v, okay. So v is the longer one, u is the shorter one. Um, and this doesn't necessarily have to be true. U could be longer, V could be shorter. But just for demonstrative purposes, uh, this is always useful to do it this way. Okay, so what's going to happen is, what is a projection? Uh, a projection, like if you think of a projector, um, it projects things onto a screen and makes it flat, right? So what we're going to do is project U onto V. So this is our goal, to project vector U onto vector V. So what that means is taking this vector u here, okay, and we're kind of going to just drop, what's it called? It, it's called um, dropping a perpendicular. So we're going to drop a perpendicular line down so it makes a right angle with the vector we're projecting onto, which is v, okay? And this resultant vector, so from the beginning to where we just landed on v, this is going to be called um, projection of u onto v. So that'll be called u parallel. Okay, so that's another name. So projection um, onto V of U. This is how you write projection of V, projection of U onto V, U onto V, um, is the same as saying U parallel. Okay, and that just means um, because how remember how in the beginning uh, when we had a vector there it has certain components right. So it has like this component and this component, um, or it depends on the axes that you use but it could also have an x component and a y component, whichever, okay? So here, what we're doing is saying how much of u, um, in this diagram here, how much of u, um, the u arrow, is pointing in the v direction, okay? So this is what it's telling us. u parallel is saying this is how much of u is pointing in the v direction, all right? So um, conceptually, that's what's going on. That's an overview overview, excuse me, um, and formulaically, this is what's going to happen. So um, u parallel, we'll consider this the projection of u onto v, is going to be equal to u, our original u vector, dotted with the unit vector in the v direction, and then this times e, the unit vector in the v direction again, okay? Um, so this, it might be a little a lot confusing, um, admittedly. But what this is, uh, pictorially, so I'll draw another little picture here. So let's say we have our u, there's our u, and v is going this way, okay, so v is there, and we want to drop this down here, okay, so here's our perpendicular, all right, and we want this new vector down here, we want to know what is this, okay. Um, so what we do first is this here, this in, in the parentheses, this is called the component, component of uh, u along v, okay? And the way we get this is that um, this is technically, if we look at, so let, let's define what is this unit vector here. The unit vector pointing in the v direction is going to be v itself divided by its own magnitude, right? Remember how that's we got our unit vector u hat, but now they're just naming it something different called e, e hat, and then subscript v down here, okay? So this is our unit vector, all right? So this is what we have going on here in the e spot. Uh, so the u, u dot e, e hat v is actually u dot v, sorry, not a v hat, v over the magnitude of v, okay? 
So this, remember our, um, our other equation? So here, I'll move on to the next slide so we have more room to work with, but keep this in mind right down here, okay? All right, so let me redraw this picture real quick. So we have our u and our v, and we want this one here. We want u parallel. Okay, so again, let's recall um, u dot v. This is our relation. This is the all-important one. Before, I just use v and w. Same thing, just two different vectors, cosine theta. Okay, so remember on the, on the bottom of the last slide, um, I just had u dot v over v, over the magnitude of v, right? And this was u, this is like u dot e hat. So this is the same thing. Now I'm just exploring the component of u along v, okay? So this was in parentheses, all right? This is just the parentheses part. So this, though, this here can be rephrased uh, using this equation up there. So if we were to divide both sides by v, magnitude of v, magnitude of v, so see here on the left, this is exactly the same as that. So what that means is that this thing is equal to the right side. So magnitude of u, magnitude of u, times cosine of the angle between u and v. Okay, so what this is, again, this is the component of u along v, so I'll just write it again, component of u along v. That is very important, okay? Component just means the length of, okay? So let's say, um, so this is our vector u here, the one that I'm tracing right now, and the length of it is going to be magnitude of u, right? So let me move that back here, okay magnitude of u. That's it. And the angle between u and v is this theta in, in there, okay? And so the length of this here is actually just the hypotenuse, so that'll be magnitude of u times cosine of the angle, all right? So magnitude of u times cosine of the angle. So that gives us the length of our arrow, of the arrow that we want to find, okay? So that's going to be um, the length or the component. Okay, that's the component portion. And then going back to our overall formula, right, of u parallel, this was given by u dot uh, unit vector uh, e hat. And then, so th we found this part. This is the same thing as u magnitude of u times cosine theta. So that tells us how long the vector is, our unknown vector here. And we also had this other another unit vector sitting there, right? So let's see what this means. What, why, do we, why is that even there? So um, again, e, e hat v, that's the same thing as v, our vector v, uh, divided by its magnitude, okay? And so what we actually did here was just normalize v. Um, in other words, just make, like force its magnitude or force its length to be one, okay? Um, and we just want to do that to eliminate any other, um, I guess, factors you could kind of consider it, just to make every the problem simpler, okay? We just want to take v, we're taking this big vector here, and all we want is its direction. We don't really care about its length, so we're just going to make it 1, all right? So um, we still are preserving the direction, but we just made the overall length 1, okay? So what this does is give, give us the direction part of our vector. Okay, so this provides the direction and this provides the length. So u parallel, u parallel, which is our new vector here, our projection onto v, that's composed of, that's composed of the length of u parallel, which is this, which is equivalent to this, okay? So that's u parallel times the direction of u parallel. So that would be our unit vector, which happens to point in the same direction as v, okay? So there are a bunch of ways to write it. I just wrote a couple here. Um, so, but yeah, that's the overall view of projections. Okay, so now I'd like to present everything that we've learned about projections um, involving the dot product and everything in a more organized fashion, kind of like, okay, a summary of what we've just learned. All right, so again, I'll draw our little picture here should be very familiar with this by the time we're through. 
Um, okay, and we want this new vector here, which is called the projection of u onto v or u parallel. Okay, what part of u is parallel with v? Okay, so what we found is that the length right here of u parallel, so the length of u parallel, sorry, there's a lot of vertical lines going on here, double vertical lines, um, is equal to, so here's our angle and this side here, or this length, is going to be just the magnitude of u, okay? Um, so the, the length or the magnitude of u parallel is simply going to be just by properties of a triangle. That's going to be the magnitude of u times cosine theta, okay? Um, and our direction is going to come from v, from pointing in the v direction. And we just wanted to make it a unit vector e hat sub v, right? Because then that actually, um, there is a function for that, for using the unit vector as opposed to just the vector v. Um, it's because when we plug it into the formula, we don't want it to mess up the length. We don't, we don't want it to influence the length of our u parallel. So u parallel, that's going to be, um, we want the length of it. So we want u, um, magnitude u, times cosine theta, that's the length of u parallel, okay, that's what we want, and then we also want the direction, but we don't want it to mess up our length that's already here, so we just want it to be a unit vector, so we're just going to add our unit vector on the end here, and this is going to give us, uh, this here, that's just another way to rephrase the parentheses, it's not in our equation, okay, um, so this is in our equation, but we want this unit vector here just to give us the direction, which way do we point? with our new um, projection of u, okay? And again, our, another way to rewrite this is the following. We have, okay, so we have u parallel is equal to, according to our equation that we've had before, um, where we have u dot v is equal to magnitude of u times magnitude of v cosine theta. So if we want just the u magnitude of u and cosine theta on this side, what we'd have to do is divide by magnitude of v divided by magnitude of v, and we get that we can replace these circled things with what's on the left side. So that gives us u dot v over magnitude of v. Okay, so we have that inside the parentheses, and then we also have this unit vector sitting outside giving us the direction of our projected vector, of our projection, right? Okay, so now just one last thing I want to do is you can leave it like this leave it like this or think of it like this. Um, also, just another way to look at it is just using the pr one of the properties of the dot product that um, I mentioned on the 1 through 4 in the beginning of this video. Um, so what I can do is just basically just regroup. I can move these anywhere because they're just scalars, right? So I can move them on the inside under here. So that's just the magnitude of v squared, which was equal to, and we'll see it here, v dot v, right? So we actually have a u dot v on top, and then a v dot v on the bottom, and just the vector v over here, okay? So that's just another way to write it, um, if you want to think of it like this. Uh, there are plenty of different options. You could use this one here, you could use this one here, or you could even use the one where it says u dot e hat. This is the, the unit vector pointing in the v direction, and then another e hat sitting outside. Okay, like I said, there's plenty of options. Um, you can think of them any different way you want to. Um, it's just important to remember and understand where everything is coming from, as opposed to just memorizing formulas, um, just for the sake of memorizing formulas.